Namaste and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be speaking about five scientific reasons for why we should practice yoga. Some of you might already be thinking, who am I to give an authority on scientific reasons to practice yoga? But even though I've been doing yoga since childhood, I did a master's in cognitive neuroscience during the pandemic. So when the pandemic started in 2020, I was at that time teaching in a yoga teacher training program. And of course, there wasn't much work because all the borders were shut in Bali and not, not many tourists were coming from outside. So I was figuring out what should I do next. Of course, I started to work online, but working online for me wasn't as fulfilling. And so I decided that I always wanted to study something deeper about yoga, meditation from a scientific perspective. And I thought, okay, this is the perfect time to go and do my master's. So I did a master's in cognitive neuroscience, where initially my idea was to do first person research and research how yoga and meditation is affecting the brain and the nervous system. But once I got there and started studying, I realized that first person research and me being in an academic role wasn't really meant for me. So I decided instead to just take a literature review of all the research that's already done on meditation. So I did a few papers which I wrote, where, which was a literature review on meditation, on yoga, especially its impact it has on our nervous system, on our endocrine system, the system of our hormones, as well as um, the gut bacteria and, its, and these practices and its effect on our gut. So in today's video, I'm going to be speaking about five reasons, scientific reasons that I learned during my studies of how yoga affects us in a positive way. So number one, I would say is that yoga as a practice, we do many kinds of movements when we do the asanas. So we do our forward folds, we do back bends, we do lateral extensions or lateral stretches, we do rotation of the spine, twists, we do inversions. And so we kind of target different planes of movement. Now, what this does when we target so many different planes of movement, which is different from, for instance, just going for a walk or going for a run or cycling, where the movements are quite repetitive. So we are not doing a varied amount of movements or even, for instance, going to the gym. We do a lot of strength, we build the strength in our muscles and that is also beneficial in its own way. But in yoga, we kind of torque and move and rotate the body in, in multiple directions. And what this is really good for is the circulation in our body. So the latest research has found that yoga is really good for blood circulation throughout the body, for the lymph nodes, for the lymphatic system. And what, what has been found is that through yoga practice, so just about a one hour practice, has a great effect on removing certain hormones from our bloodstream. So we know that there are certain hormones like cortisol and adrenaline which become, which get secreted into our body when we are in a state of stress. So when we are overworking, when there is too much going on in our lives, we get into this state of stress, we have our nervous system sympathetic branch of our nervous system becomes active and we have all these hormones flooding our system. So these hormones flooding our system causes us to be in a kind of restless, rushed state even after that stressful situation. So think of someone that is going through stress on a regular basis, even in their time off, in the evenings, in their holidays, you'll find that they are still rushed, anxious, um, restless and that is because there are all these hormones flowing through the bloodstream. So by working these different planes of movement it increases circulation which actually helps to purify or move these hormones out of our blood. These hormones move out of the blood and they generally move into the digestive system where they get eliminated or detoxified through our poop or our piss. So in this sense um, the one of the greatest benefits of yoga is circulation and through increased circulation getting rid of certain hormones from the bloodstream which are causing us to remain in a state of stress. The number two thing, uh, number two scientific reason of why we should do yoga is also related to stress and it's related 
primarily to the nervous system. So what is unique about yoga is that we are trying to combine our breathing with the movement. So unlike in, for example, gymnastics, which has quite similar movements, you could say they are also stretching the body and so on. But there is the breath component is missing. Many other exercise programs, the breath component is missing to the extent that we are not all the time aware of our breathing. So in a yoga asana practice, if we do it correctly, while we're doing the movements, we're also acutely aware of our breathing, trying to take long, deep, slow breaths. So neuroscience has found that when we breathe slower and deeper, our nervous system starts to calm down. We have a parasympathetic arrest and digest response in our nervous system. When we are stressed, we are anxious, you take it to the extreme, one is having a panic attack. In all of these circumstances, our breath rate, which is the number of breaths we take per minute, starts to increase. So we have a faster breath rate. According to medical science also today, if one has um, a cancer or any kind of chronic disease, a late stage diabetes, maybe an issue with their kidney or liver, any kind of a chronic disease or problem with the or inner organs will result in a increase in our breath rate. So our breath rate will start to increase or get faster. So the ancient yogis would measure life in breath. And so they said that the quicker we breathe through these breaths, the quicker we die. And the slower we breathe through these breaths, the longer we live. And today medical science and neuroscience is showing us that this is true, that if we have a very shallow breath rate, a breath pattern, it will cause us to, ha to have all kinds of other chronic diseases. So the relationship goes in this direction, but it also goes in the other direction. If we have chronic disease, it will also impact our breath rate. So when we do our yoga asanas, we are going into various movements which might be uncomfortable for many. So in these, in these circumstances of discomfort, we are still trying to breathe long and deep, elongating our breath. And when we do this effectively, what we are doing is that when I am trying to stretch my body in a particular way, I have a kind of micro stress that I am applying on the body. See, I am trying to do a forward fold and I am stretching my hamstrings. My hamstrings are being stretched. There is this sensation of discomfort. Uh, we kind of feel like it's difficult to breathe maybe if you're doing it for the first few times. And so that sensation of discomfort in that moment, we're trying to breathe long, deep breaths. And we're signaling to our body that, okay, this though there is this discomfort, we can remain calm. There is no great danger to us in this moment. And so it's a kind of training through movement Along with breathing, we are training our nervous system to respond better to stress. So the idea is that, um, of course, we want to reduce the amount of stress in our lives. But not only that, it is impossible to take away all the stress that we will face. And it is not good to do so as well. We need to have some stressors in our life. Um, it's good for us because if we adapt to those stresses, we become stronger and more vital. So, but what yoga enables us to do as we start to connect our breathing with our movement, we then have a greater breath awareness in our day-to-day -day life and we are able to deal with stressors in our life much better as a result. Number three, the third scientific reason why yoga is great for us is actually based on the muscular and the fascial system, which is part of the connective tissue in the body. So we hold a lot of tension in this connective tissue in our body, primarily the fascia. So the, you can think of the fascia as a really thin cotton candy like consistency of tissue which is enveloping all our muscles in the body. So we have different lines of fascia, the frontal line, the posterior line, we have lines that crisscross and so on. So the fascia in our body, it has been shown, especially in the last 10 years, we found that uh, fascia stores tension from traumatic events or stressful situations. So if we go through maybe a period at work that's really stressful, maybe a few years, 
this tension will build up in the fascia, in the fascial tissue of the body. Uh, if we go through a traumatic experience, uh, maybe there is some violence inflicted upon us, maybe we lose somebody dear to us, this tension also accumulates in the fascia. So this tension accumulates in the fascia and it has to be released somehow. And yoga is a great way to release this fascia because yoga works not only at the muscular level but also at the super, just the superficial connective tissue, the fascial level and yoga starts to open up the fascia which is why a lot of people who come to yoga they start practicing certain postures and they, they experience that certain emotions are starting to come up or come to the surface. Maybe certain emotions brought on by childhood memories or childhood trauma suddenly emerge and come to the surface. And um, this, is all, this is all true because when we start to release that fascia, that fascia, that fascia becomes relaxed, then actually that traumatic um, event or that stress which was being stored in the fascia, it gets released and the, the corresponding emotion comes. So the research on fascia is quite new. It's been, it's, been hap it's been on for the last 10 years. It's a very new field and there's a lot of breakthroughs every, every few months. So it's definitely a field to watch out for, to read scientific papers on if you're interested. And I think we've just touched the tip of the iceberg of fascia and really the connective tissue is kind of showing us that our physical body and our mental emotional bodies are not two completely separate entities. They are actually one working in cognizance with each other. So when we work on our physical bodies, we are also working on our mental and emotional selves. When, so we, from the yogic perspective, we want to merge together the mental, emotional and physical aspects to create a holistic, to create holistic well-being. The fourth reason why yoga is really good for us is actually its effect upon our inner organs. So what is happening when we do some kind of exercise routine, say it might be something like Pilates, it might be doing conditioning or strength training in the gym or calisthenics. These are all great modalities that help us get fit and feel better. But essentially all of these modalities work on the superficial or the big muscles. So they work on the big muscle groups on the surface of the body. For instance, if you're doing a, a back squat, we're working a lot on our core. We're also working um, on the quadriceps, on the glutes and so on. Or if we do a bench press, we're working on our pectorals, our shoulders and so on. So each of these are great to develop strength, muscle, muscle mass, to develop um, our skeletal muscles to, to, to increase bone density and so on. So all our strength programs are good for this. But what yoga offers us that is unique to all of these modalities is that we really start to work on the inner muscles in the body. Again, because we, we move our body in so many directions with the forward folds, with deep twists, with deep back bends, we actually start to invigorate our inner organs in the process. So there's a lot of research that has found that a regular yoga practice done for maybe 45 minutes a day can have an amazing effect upon uh, the detoxification process of, of some organs. So for example, if somebody suffers from fatty liver, for example, this individual coming to yoga, it has been found that can detoxify the liver much better than if they just did some other exercise program. And that is because through the lateral stretches and the twists, we are directly starting to target the micro muscles that are around our organs, the muscles that make up the organs itself. And so we are um, really working on that detoxification process. So while yoga might not give you a lot of strength in the bigger muscles, you might not become um, very large by only doing yoga, you might not put on a lot of muscle, it is absolutely essential for the micro muscles within your body. So thus I would suggest to anybody who is doing any other kind of form of fitness, whether it's a runner, uh, a weightlifter, 
um, a calisthenics or a, or a martial artist, then doing some yoga practice is good because it will help to tone the inner muscles uh, deep in the deeper layers of our body to strengthen our inner organs and so on. The fifth reason why yoga is so good for us can be found in the brain. There are the GABA receptors and the GABA hormones that are produced in the brain. And many studies have found that just after doing yoga, this, these GABA hormones are released in the brain. These hormones are really important for our sense of well-being, our sense of happiness and joy. Of course, it is not, it is not released for an unlimited period of time after doing yoga. It is estimated that these hormones are released for a period of 6 to 12 hours depending on the individual which is why it's so important to do yoga every single day and why traditionally it was always recommended to do yoga early in the morning. So we would, we would after our yoga practice, we have this feel good feeling. A lot of people may experience this, come out of a yoga class feeling really peaceful, really good. They feel at peace in harmony with everything around them. And the reason is because of these GABA uh, hormones being released and so the brain is, uh, has this feel-good hormones that are being secreted within it, uh, which makes one feel better for a, for a period of time. Of course, it's not, it's not forever. So doing a yoga class today will not have a carryover effect um, in your well-being tomorrow. But if we actually do it every single day, it can be highly beneficial for our overall health and well-being. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, do give it a like. Do drop a comment if you would like me to make new content on something related to this topic. And do subscribe to me. It would really help me out. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me today. And I hope to see you again. Namaste.